Hey guys, so with the NHL draft lottery just being completed, uh, I've got my updated 2021 NHL mock draft, and today I have the uh, full first round mock draft uh, without trades, but in my next one I will have trades in the mock draft, so make sure to watch out for that. But let's get started here. So starting off at number one with the Buffalo Sabres, I have them taking William Eklund. I think this is a really tough pick, and even though Owen Powers consensus number one, I think uh, they will go for Eklund here, and it's pretty much, I think, uh, there's still like eight guys that they can take, and the uh, Owen Power, maybe I'd say there's like a 30% chance of them taking. I think he's maybe slightly the most likely guy, but I think that it is uh, much better for them to take William Eklund. I think Owen Power is kind of overrated, but William Eklund is a center who also can play the wing, who played for Deja Gardens in the SHL, playing with Alexander Holtz. And he put up 23 points in 40 games. So first half, he was insane. He almost had a point per game. He slowed down a little bit, but he still had a really, really good season. Uh, and he is uh, 19. He was born later in the year. So he is a year older, but I think he can come into the NHL uh, right away, even though it'd probably be smarter to play him in the AHL because he still needs to work on some things, but he's a really good player. Uh, he had a really good year, and I think that he is, uh, right, he's risen with the rankings a ton. At the beginning of the year, he wasn't even like a first-round prospect. Now I have him going number one, but I think they could take a guy like Beniers or Owen Power or Brant Clark as well. Moving on to number two, we have the Seattle Kraken, and I've been taking Brant Clark. Uh, this is another very tough one, but I think that they are going to be taking the first defenseman off the board in Brant Clark. I think he is the best defenseman in this class this past year playing in the Slovak League. He put up 15 points in 26 games, which is pretty good uh, since it's a men's league and he can play in the OHL. So he decided to go to uh, the men's league and uh, he's a very good offensive puck moving defenseman, a great transition game, and he can drive the offensive uh, game. And he's also a very smart player on the ice. So I think that he has a really, really high offensive ceiling and he has uh, I think the highest ceiling in this class, especially among defensemen, even though he is a much riskier pick than a guy like Owen Power, but he has such a good ceiling that I think that Seattle just can't uh, pass on him because Seattle will give him all the opportunities uh, to become an elite number one defenseman as they're an expansion team. If they take him, like whoever they take will be their most important player right off the bat. So they will be able to develop Clark properly and make him like a number one defenseman. Uh, Similar to someone like Jamie Drysdale or Bowen Barham, and even Kale Bakar, I think he has that potential. Next up at number three, we have the Anaheim Ducks, and I've been taking Owen Power. So Owen Power is now coming off the board, going to Anaheim, and I think this is a pretty good spot for him. As for me, he could really go anywhere from one to seven or eight, but he is a big six, five or six, six, even by now. Defense been playing with the University of Michigan in the NCAA. Uh, this past year, he put up 16 points in 26 games and just three assists in nine games in the World uh, Junior Championships playing for, or just in the World Championships playing for Canada. So he is a pre solved player. He did play in the World Championships and he's playing in college, so he's a year older. There are a lot of guys who are overagers in this class or just um, he got held back a year. So he's one of the late birthday players and even though he is projected by a lot of people to be the first overall pick. I think the Ducks will take him here as uh, the Ducks could go with a few guys, but I think the three guys that they will take are either going to be Owen Power, Matthew Beneers, or Brant Clark. So Brant Clark's gone here, so I think they are going to go with Power, bringing in a big defenseman to play alongside Jamie Drysdale. So Jamie Drysdale will be the uh, smaller puck-moving offensive defenseman, whereas Power will be the big physical uh, two-way defenseman. Next up at four, we have the New Jersey Devils, and I think they have to do this by taking Luke Hughes, Jack Hughes' brother. Uh, he has, I think that Brant Clark has high ceiling, but Luke Hughes has a close ceiling to him. He has a really high ceiling, and I think although he is the riskiest out of the, the main four top defensemen in this class, uh, if he ends up booming, he could be an incredible player, but I think he also has the highest bust potential as well, which is why he is a bit of a risky pick here, but I think he uh, still is an excellent player playing with his brother Jack, and he has, much like Clark, potential to be a real number one defenseman, whereas I think a guy like Power, I don't think he'll be a number one, I think he will 
probably just be really good uh, number two defenseman at best. But he has got uh, comparisons to Victor Hedman. Uh, but Luke Hughes put up really good numbers, and he's actually looked a year younger than William Eklund. So he's a younger player, but he put up 30, 34 points in 38 games with the USN TDP U18 team. Uh, next up at five, we have the Columbus Blue Jackets, and I just don't think they can pass on this guy. They're taking Matthew Beniers. Now, Seth Jones is going to uh, go. He's going to get traded this offseason for sure. So they're going to need another defenseman. They do have Zach Zagrenski, uh, but I think they need someone else. But I think with Power Clark and Hughes all gone, they're going to go with the forward here. I think it's too early for Edmondson, and he's just too risky of a pick there. I don't think he really will be able to be good enough to replace Seth Jones. And they can just get someone in free agency or trade for someone else. But they, uh, I don't think they will actually because the Blue Jackets are rebuilding. So I think they go with Beniers here, who is, in my opinion, the most NHL ready player. He's very good two way, uh, complete forward. And he put up solid numbers playing with uh, University of Michigan with uh, Owen Power. So uh, this past year, he put up 24 points in 24 games, so point per game with Michigan. He's a very good two-way center, and I think his potential is going to be a really good number uh, two center. He doesn't have the high potential as a guy like Eklund, but I think he is a very safe pick, and I think his ceiling is probably a number two defenseman, a really good number two defenseman, and his floor is probably a lower end number three, to, uh, or number three forward, not uh, defenseman. Next up at six, we have the Detroit Red Wings, and this is a very tough one. Originally, I had them taking Wallstead, but instead I have them taking Kent Johnson, who I think has the highest ceiling amongst forwards in this class, uh, as he's a very risky pick. He's kind of like Luke Hughes, where he has a very uh, low floor but insanely high ceiling as well. And I think he could very much end up becoming the best player in this class, which is why Iserman just can't pass on him. Uh, he's an excellent player, playing with Beniers and Owen Power with the University of Michigan, who is just stacked. He put up 27 points in 26 games, so um, just slightly over a point per game. Uh, putting up three more points than Matthew Beniers in two more games. So basically played, had the same production as Beniers, but he has incredible hands. Uh, he's a great skater and has a decent shot as well. So if he gets developed properly, he can be a true number elite, uh, number one winger. He's probably going to play the wing, not center, but he can play both. Next up at seven, we have the Sharks, and they're going to be taking Jesper Wallstead. He has a franchise goalie, and I was thinking Detroit would take him, but Yasmin said he probably won't, and I think that they are going to go with Johnson. So if there's trades, I'd have the Sharks moving up to take him maybe to like five or four, uh, because he both sets a top five quality player, and with a weaker draft class, I think this is an absolute steal here at seven, as he has, he's the best goalie prospect since Carey Price. He's a generational talent at the gold hunting position, better than Askarov and Spencer Knight put up crazy good numbers in the SHL, uh, 0.908 uh, save percentage and 2.23 goals against average in 22 games, uh, playing as an 18 year old with Lulea, which is absolutely crazy. And they do need a goalie battle. Moving on to eight, we have the Kings pick and I have them taking Dylan Gunther. He led the WHL in points per game. I think this is a steal, a very good pick here for the Kings. At nine, uh, the Canucks, and they're going to be taking uh, Simon Edmondson. Now, Simone Edmondson played for Florida, only had one point in 10 games in the SHL, so didn't do nearly as good as Eklund. I think he is still a solid defenseman, but he's kind of overrated. I don't see him in the same class as the eight guys who went ahead of him, and he is big, but I think his ceiling is very limited. Um, moving on to 10, he the Sens, and they're going to be taking Cole Stellinger, I think he is one of the most underrated players here. Uh, he put up really good numbers in the Sioux Falls Stampede in the USHL, 46 points in 31 games after the OHL uh, or WHL season got canceled. He decided to play there after even uh, when it uh, went on, uh, but he put put up really good numbers. He's an elite offensive player. His main weakness is skating, but I think that won't be too big of an issue. He's playing with Ottawa, who's a uh, Bigger two-way team, but also some really good skilled players, namely uh, Tim Stutzla. I think Cylinder will fit right in as an elite uh, center or winger on that team. Moving on to 11, we have the Chicago Blackhawks taking Fabian Wiesel. He's a red wing playing for Lulea with Wolfstead in the SHL. He put up three points in 26 games, so played more games in Edmonton. 
a decent point total for an 18 year old 17 year old there so i think that this could be a solid pick for chicago and he has a solid second line potential but i think he probably should be like a at least a decent middle six a center or other middle six right wing for chicago moving at 12 we have the calgary flames and they're going to be taking Trevor Borgo. In my opinion, the most underrated player in this class, he's an elite offensive player, putting up 40 points in only 28 games uh, this year, playing in the QMJHL. So he's uh, very good offensively, some defensive concerns, but he, his main um, purpose will be to produce offense on the Flames. And I think he can be a really good top six forward, and he has a really high ceiling offensively, he could even be a first liner. Next up at 13, I have the Phil Philadelphia Flyers, and they're going to be taking Chaz Lucius, um, another hard player to judge since he was injured pretty much all year, but he put up 20 points in 13 games in the USDP after uh, he came back from his injury. So that's really good numbers there in the USNTDP. He's playing with the University of Minnesota next year, but I think that he's a really good player who could sneak into the top 10. 14, we have the starts, and they're going to be taking probably the draft, one of the draft's biggest ballers in Carson Lambos about a year ago. He could have been the first overall pick. He was in that first of the conversation. Now most people have him in the top 10, so I'm easing it out of the top 15. But I think this is still um, a very good pick for the starts who could use some defense depth. They got Heisken and Klingberg. Uh, Thomas Harley, but not and uh, Essel Lindell, but I think they can just add really good depth with Lambos, who still has a um, pretty high ceiling as he was good once uh, a year ago. And finally, running at the top 15, we have the Rangers, and they're taking Mason McTavish, the draft's biggest riser. And I think that he's not going to be too high. Uh, he put up nine points in 11 games in the Swiss League with Olton, so. Not that great of a league, still putting up good numbers, uh, but he had a really good, uh, he had a really good World Juniors under 18s, putting up 11 points in seven games. And even though I don't have him in the top 10, I think he is a still a top 15 quality prospect, but he, in my opinion, is probably in like the 10 to 20 range. Moving on to the Habs pick at 16, I have Montreal taking Matthew Coronado. Uh, Matthew Coronado is a left wing who played with the Chicago Steel in the USHL and put up 85 points in 51 games, including 48 goals. So he's a really good goal scorer uh, at the wing, which the Habs desperately need. And he's committed to Harvard next year, but he's a smaller guy, only 5'10". But I think that he will be a big help to the Habs who just need more scoring. And I think he can be a solid middle six guy. Next up at 17 with the Blues and they're taking Zachary LaRue. Uh, I think he's another guy who it's kind of harder to judge. He's in the 10 to 20 range. Similar to Coronado and Mason McTavish. But this past year put up 39 points in 33 games for Halifax and Mooseheads. He's a bit of a more gritty power forward type player who's still really good offensively. At 18, we have the Preds, and they're taking Corson Holmans, uh, another solid defenseman there who has a decent potential to be a solid top four defenseman. So I think that this can end up being a good pick for the Preds. So this past year, we put up 11 points in eight games with uh, Brooks Bandits of the AJHL. At 19, we have the New Jersey Devils, and they're taking Atu Rati. So Rati is finally off the board. He's fallen a ton. He used to be the consensus first overall pick two years ago. He's now outside the top 15, almost outside the top 20. But he is a center who played for Carpa in the Liga. He had only 6.35 games to pass year. I think this is a good spot for him. And New Jersey has a lot of good young players. So I think that um, the Devils could have Jack Hughes as their uh, number one center, and then Heesher and Aturati as the three centers. So, the top two guys were first overall picks, and the third guy was projected to be a first overall pick a while ago. At 20, we have the Oilers, and they're taking Sebastian Kosa. So, um, Sebastian Kosa is second best goalie in this class, and Wallstein, even though he hasn't as good as him, I think that he still can be an elite goalie. He has a potential, uh, putting up a .941 save percentage and 1.57 goals against average with the Edmonton Oil Kings. 
of the WHL, so he can be a really good goalie, which the Oilers need, and even though he's still, still a few years away. Um, Mike Smith, I think that he's pretty much done. He's uh, already 39 years old. He's not 30 years old in that, so I think they need to pick a goalie here. At 21 with the Wild, and they're taking Brennan Ottman, uh, another guy playing Flint uh, Firebird in the OHL, but he had to go, so he played in uh, the Swiss League. Next up at 22, I have the Jackets taking Olin Zellweger. I think that Olin Zellweger is the most, um, it's a very underrated player, much like Borgo. He put up 13 points in 11 games with the Everett Silver Tips in the WHL as a defenseman. So he is one of the lesser known players, and I just found about him uh, a few days ago, but he's a really, really good player, put up really good numbers, so I think that he can easily find his way into the first round. At 23 with the Wings, and they're taking Daniel Cheka. He's dropped a bit, but still a um, solid player that I think uh, will fit well with the Wings after they take Kent Johnson. At 24, uh, we have the Jackets. They're picking Strapped, and they're taking Francesco Pinelli. So he is another player who's supposed to play in the OHL, but played in the Alps League with HDD uh, Jess Nice this past year. He's a center who put up 11 points in 13 games. Not a great league, but I think he's still a solid player put up decent numbers before. 25, we have the Wild, and they're taking Stanislav Lozil. Another uh, decent defenseman who I think is a late first round uh, talent, and uh, he put up 3.30 games in the Czech League this past year as a defenseman. So I think the Wild can add another defenseman after they're probably going to lose one in the expansion draft. At 26, we have the Florida Panthers, and they're taking Oscar Olison. So Olison played in the SHL this year, 4.16 games as a winger, so not bad. And I think he can be a solid addition forward position for Florida. At 27, we have Vegas, and they're taking the drafts. Actually, biggest faller, um, if you don't include Roddy there, and Zachary Bolda. So he was supposed to be a top 15 pick for higher than guys like Borgo and uh, Larue, and even McTavish. But he has dropped a ton because he played with the Ramuski Oceana uh, last year with Alexi Lachnier, and he kind of boosted his numbers. Now, Bulldog played pretty much the same this year as he did last year with that Lachnier, which is a bit concerning because uh, he is a year older, so he should probably be better, which is why he's dropped to be a late first round pick, and even he could go outside the first round. Dang, only 29 points in 27 games in the QMDHL. 28, we have the Winnipeg Jets, and I've been taking Evan Mouse. Uh, he's another guy like Owen Zellweger, who is a little lesser known and just rose up recently, but he put up 22 points in 32 games with the Quebec Ramparts of the QMJHL. So I think that, that the Jets have got to take a defenseman here. I think they could maybe, he's maybe more of a second rounder, but uh, with his play, he is definitely deserving of being a first round pick. The Jets have got to take a defenseman here, so they're taking Mouse. At 29, we have the Boston Bruins, and they're taking Logan Stankovin. Uh, Stankovin is another guy who uh, had played elsewhere, but then the season continued for the WHL, putting up 10 points in six games, so almost two points a game in six games. They're a small sample size, but I think he is uh, deserving a first-round pick at the center right wing, so I think they're just going to add more for depth here. In the second to last pick, we have the Carolina Hurricanes, and they're taking Simone Robertson. So, originally, I actually had him going to the Bruins, but I think he's going to fall here to the Hurricanes. And this past year, Simone Robertson put up two points in 22 games in the SHL. He is a right winger. So, I mean, usually in the SHL, these guys only put up two, three, four points, um, but he's still a solid player, and Carolina already has too many defensemen. I think they're going to have to go with the forward here. And he is, I think, the best player available. And finally, 31, we had the Colorado Avalanche. And they are taking Isaac Frozen. And really, not much thought to this. I, they're not taking defensemen. They already have uh, way too many. But I think they're just going with the best forward available here, which is Frozen. So that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave a like and subscribe. And let me know what you think of this mock draft. Uh, but that is it. See you in the next one.